Hi, my name is Rod Cleef, and I'm the host of the Lifetime Cash Flow Through Real Estate Investing Podcast. And every week I interview multifamily rock stars, and we talk about how they built incredible wealth for themselves and their families through multifamily properties. So hit the like and subscribe buttons to get notified every Monday when a new episode comes out. Let's get to it. Welcome to another edition of How to Build Lifetime Cash Flow Through Real Estate Investing. I'm Rod Cleef and I'm thrilled you're here. And I promise you, you're going to enjoy this interview today. Now, we are interviewing a gentleman named Philip Michael. And if you don't know Philip, he immigrated this country with $79 in his pocket in 2014 and now has built a $57 million real estate empire. He's a prolific writer super great energy, seems like a super nice guy. I'm really excited to, to get into his life story and, and, and how he, he's built to success. And I saw this, this awesome quote that, from Forbes that said, the mission for Michael is to create a $1 billion millennial-owned real estate community by 2025 and with business remaining on an upward curve, he's well on target to achieve that aim. So, Awesome, awesome to have you on the show today, my friend. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was very flattering of them to say, but uh, I'll take it. Thank you. All right, that's All right, right. that's right. Any, any press is good press. Well, that was good press. So, so, so listen, you know, you've got a unique story, yes. um, and, and I want to drill down on it, but maybe you could just start by kind of giving people some background, um, you know, where you're from, how you got to where you are now. I know you're also a, a, an incredible writer, a prolific writer. So, let's, let's take, give my listeners kind of a, Absolutely. you know, I'll overview. make sense, heads and tails of everything. So, awesome. uh, my background is, I originally, I'm essentially an entrepreneur, and I feel as though uh, business a lot of people want to get into the hacks and the t- tips and the tactics and the secrets, but essentially, and, and this goes back to what you said uh, before we went on the air, is that the principles remain the same. Uh, your work ethic, do you set goals, do you work diligently? These are just basic components that, that you require in, in any business. I feel like those are principles that are universal. Now, so my background is in media, and the, the reason I got into media was because I really like sports, and my nephew had just turned professional, so I wanted to... He could go play all over the world. I could be in the stadium with him just writing about it. That was my uh, silly dream as a, as a young man. But in effect, the reason why I, am, I have a relationship with business and why, what, what drove me to become an entrepreneur is because my father had a business for a long, long time. He has a commercial real estate portfolio. Mm-hmm. He's developed office buildings. He has a multifamily portfolio to this, uh, to this day that he operates. He owns office buildings with his brothers. So there's five uh, boys altogether. My father, he has four brothers. And with the exception of one who's actually a manager at a bank that gives us a line of credit and check this out, 2.5% non-recourse up to 12 million. We, got it, we paid it just quarterly and we use that to develop. So, and this nice. is straight from Denmark. But the other four were entrepreneurs. Nice. So uh, he never really pushed me in that direction. Sometimes I wish he would have, but he, he's, he was a type that was so nice. He didn't want to push us that way he went. He wanted us to find out for, for ourselves, which is what I eventually, uh, eventually did. Right. So um, anyways, he had that business, business side. And I just got to see that without and just innately understanding certain things without actually pursuing it. So I came here to go to business school and well, I came, I I was a trained journalist in Danish. Then I went to Hawaii for journalism school as well. And it was at that point in time, I realized that type of work probably wasn't for me. I probably had some uh, bigger dreams. I remember I started applying for business school and in my essay, I wrote, I want to own buildings in New York, in Florida, and, and, and in Europe. So that was, one of the, that was sort of the starting ground. And I came here and I just utilized, because when, when I came to New York, I was 30 years old. What was it, 2014? Yeah, I was 30 years old. I didn't have any money. I came with $79. I didn't have a social security or a green, a green card at the time. That's a process. So I couldn't work, even though I had lots of education. So what I just fell back on was me being able to write. And what I did was uh, I booked three nights at a hostel, which cost me $52.38. I still have the receipt. Hmm. And I just figured out a way to extend my stay. And without getting into too many details, I, I was winning writing competitions where I would get paid on PayPal. And okay. then from there, one of the people that was involved with that was a former uh, broadcaster on ESPN, ABC, was a former uh, commissioner of the New York State Athletic Commission. He was very much in boxing. And he invited me on this show on Sirius XM as a guest, and I ended up becoming a regular. Long story short, I was able to build a network in media using the ability that I had. I would reach out to financial publications and say, this was how I started building a network in real estate. 
say, hey, I know you guys have uh, lots of information on stocks, but real estate is the largest asset class in the world. I realize you guys don't have that. I can give you free articles. Are you guys interested? So next thing you know, I have a platform, and I went and interviewed people and started building relationships that way. Long story short, I got with a uh, commercial real estate news and media company called BizNow Media. It was the largest at the time. Started as an editor, uh, reporter, editor, and later director of content strategy. And once that sold, that's when I bought my first building. No kidding. Wow, that's quite that's a story. A nutshell. I just used well, well, it to leverage relationships and then I got into the end game, which was commercial real estate, which really the reason I did that was I realized the pillar of every billion dollar fortune or every fortune was real estate. And it just hit me. Wow, that's what my dad did all along. So that's why nice. nice. Isn't that funny? You know, you, you, you've got these parents. I've got kids that ha, aren't doing real estate. I'm like, they, they, they've seen the success. They've seen the trappings of success. They've seen yeah. the lifestyle that I have. And, and, it, and it takes something else to get their interest in it. And, and the same thing happened to you. Isn't that hilarious? You, you know, well, awesome story. And I want to I I actually hammer home a couple things that you said, my friend. And that yeah. is, you played to your superpower and you pivoted your superpower into real estate at this point. Who would, th I've never, you know, even, I would have never thought to go from writing to real estate investment. What an incredible leap. And guys, so those of you listening, if you've, you know, there is, it, you're, you're, everybody in the world has a superpower of some sort. Mm -hmm. See how you can leverage it to, to capitalize on what it is that you want to do, what it is you love, whether it's real estate or not. And that's wow. just a fantastic example of that. And you use that to build relationships. You use yes. that to, to, get in, to get into the business kind of through the back door, really, through, through a marketing yeah, absolutely. angle. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I love it. I freaking love it. So tell me what you're doing now. You've got this big project that's going to blow people's minds. You're developing something. Talk about that for a minute. Well, I have a few projects that I'm developing, but like uh, the Forbes article sort of alluded to, and what I told him in the interview is that our larger vision right now. So, and I say this with the utmost humility and gratitude, but if my goal was to just live for me and just live a, a, a life where I can just travel and just like really do nothing. I could do that. Obviously money, but if, with, with, uh, with careful management, I could just do nothing for the, for, for, for however long I want to really. Right. And, but if it was just about that, uh, that you need a bigger, you need a bigger why. And my why was I realized I had less effectively than a homeless person because I didn't have a social security number. So I couldn't even go to McDonald's and ask for a job because I wouldn't be able to pass the uh, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be training. Able to sure. the, yeah, I wouldn't right. be able to. So one of the reasons was I went to business school and I went through all this school and it didn't really teach me the tools. I have my own personal thoughts and feelings about education. Oh. Uh, I feel like certain curricula are outdated and the most critical things we need, sales training, financial literacy, tax credit, isn't really uh, taught. So I, went around, so I went out and practically learned by speaking to people, becoming a writer. So the thing was I did was I knew nothing about real estate. So I would do these articles that are called Q and A's. Basically I asked them questions. I transcribed what they say. That way my ignorance wouldn't be exposed because I would just write what they said. And I would ask very basic questions. I said, okay. I remember the first guy I interviewed was a guy who started the, uh, one of the biggest commercial real estate brokerages up here in New York. And they sold for a hundred million to a company called uh, Cushman and Wakefield. So I asked him, where's the market going? That was a basic question. Um, what is a REIT and why do people like REITs? And then he would explain. And really, I it would just Google, I would just look at glossaries and real estate terms and just phrase them as, as, a, as a journalist. Wow. And that's how wow. it occurred. And essentially, it became self-taught that way. And really, it was uh, can, can I, I Can I stop you there for one second? Because on, I, I want to hammer, guys, guys. You know, I just did a, I just talked about this at my two-day boot camp last weekend about acting as if, okay? Acting as if you're already successful. And yes. Phil, Philip just did the same thing via questions um, and, 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 and not exposing ignorance. And I love that, that, the way you coined that because, guys, you can start a meetup group. You can start a Facebook group. You can do an Instagram and, and interview people. And because by virtue of the fact that you're the one doing the interviewing or presenting or hosting even though you, you may maybe still be fairly ignorant about the subject matter, you're positioned as an authority. authority and that's a, and credibility. Exactly, for credibility. Exactly. So, guys, this is a, you know, this is, I wanted to hammer that home. You can do the same thing, okay? And, and there's so many incredible platforms now that you can utilize with social media. I mean, good God, my podcast just hit 8 million downloads. 
It's unthinkable. And it was never my plan. But there's so many ways, YouTube, so many social media platforms that you can utilize for this. So I just want to hammer that home, buddy. I apologize and for interrupting. on that point because yeah. a month, month and a half ago where everyone was living. So by, by nature, I'm the type, I will always look at the glass half full. I look Good. at, okay, the status quo is this way. What opportunities created from it? Because, again, there's this Shakespeare quote that I'm particularly drawn to. There's nothing good or bad except thinking that makes it so. So, basically, there's no value built into anything except for the one that we signed to it. So, I looked at it. Okay, so yes, this is tragic. Yes, this is difficult. But now what? So, what I said was, I did a video. I said, this is the time that you can take advantage and start creating content and this and that. Let me tell you something. Since I did that, my following grew from just my friends to 30,000 on Instagram. No kidding. Yeah. Yes. And, and, my and, goal and, and, and you're dead right. Now is the time to create. Now is the now time to fun. innovate. Now is the time to pivot. And, yeah. I, and I want to circle back to something else you said. Yes. Life is about meaning. Okay. Yes. So, two people can experience the same thing and place di completely different meanings on it. And so, you know, uh, as it relates to that previous thing you just said, it, it, it's, it's, it, it, that, that, that quote, uh, and, and it's really all about meaning. And so, but, but that's awesome that you, that you put that out there in the universe because. That's exactly, it. it's funny you say it because I was speaking to Martin and I was telling him, so just really quickly about the developments that we do. We're doing this $10 million was the 10 million is the terminal value once built. Uh, but it's uh, around a hundred bed complex by Temple University. And it's, it has these AI powered components to and this and that. And I told oh, him. Oh, cool. Yes, so we student were, housing, a student housing. Student housing yes. Love and it. I want to, I, we can get into it in a second about, because uh, some people are asking, what about, with, how will this impact student housing? We're very well hedged against that. So, so I can discuss that in a second also. But what I want to talk about here is, is, I said to him, look, I need to start marketing these things. Can you please help me, shout me out on your platforms? I can get to 10,000 so I can link to it in my stories. And he said to me, he looked at me and said, you don't need me. You're already there. And he's just clear, you have a million followers. And the second he did that, inside days, it shot from 6,000 to 11,000, inside days. One video got picked up, went viral, and it's just sort of taken on a life of its own. It's just that we declared it. So that's one of the things we call it planting seeds that we do together, hold each other accountable and talk about. Because him coming to Barcelona, uh, and again, I don't oh, oh, let's talk about that for a minute because we haven't brought that up. So you've got a nephew who you basically consider a brother yes. who is, who's, who, who plays for Barcelona as soccer. Yeah. And guys, if you don't know anything about soccer, Barcelona is like the, is like the creme de la creme in yes. the soccer world. Okay. That, that, that club is the club. Okay. And, and so very, very cool. Yeah, um, so, 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 so they didn't know that. So please continue on that. Yes, talk, and the reason why this is, is critical because he signed with that tough club because he came from one of the lowest clubs in Spain. So it was mm -hmm. one of the biggest news stories in sports. So it was a really incredible journey of manifesting. And this is things that he and I talk about every single day. And so it's funny that declaring that and like would you tell, tell your listeners too is just go out at, and we, we also uh, hammer home is act as though you are the person. Yeah, act as if. Act as if. Act as if. Boom. And, and yeah. then it becomes a matter of now that we, not to get cryptic, the future you that you want to be, you become that now. And then you look to another future you. And this, it just brings forth, a, forth another level of, of confidence, um, security. That, and, and the things you bring into your life are truly remarkable. But so how, in terms of the actual projects, because uh, I, I can get random. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. I don't want to pass that up. That, that was, it, sorry. Okay, I, I, I got I to gotta stop you and hammer some stuff home. Let's because, do it. You know, it. because you, you basically said, the, the, the biblical quote, which is, as you say it, so shall it be. You make a declaration, and, and, and I do this every morning, every single morning. I sit, I sit in this recliner behind me here, and I, and, I, and I do gratitude for the things that I have in my life. My beautiful <laughs> wife of color, by the way, she's, she's black, but my, my, my beautiful wife, my, my, my kids, my, my, my students, my, my, my foundation, and I just do gratitude. But then I do gratitude. For the things that I want as if I already have them. I'm making declarations. And I'm thanking the universe for what I don't even have yet. And I've got my vision boards right here, man. Uh, hold on. Dude, look at my arm. My vision boards that I look at right here is my travel one. But I, I, do, I do this gratitude for these things that I want as if I have them. Goosebumps. 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 Awesome. You know, awesome. I do that every single morning. I wrote an article about this. And just yesterday, we started an accountability mastermind group where people Love it. do these. It's a goal-setting technique. It's really uh, the ancient concept of prayer, but the way it really, was really meant, declare it. At, the way I write it, I said, active, active voice, present tense, um, 
Measurable Present tense. So you can ask with intent. And then the technique is to visualize it as if it was a memory, as though it has already yes. happened. With gratitude. With gratitude. With exactly. gratitude. Gratitude is one of the key pieces. Okay. Yeah, absolutely and, is. And yeah. that, that's what fuels it. It's what activates the vibration. That's what makes sure it comes to you. Exactly. And that's the thing. And then I put up a video about that and people said, I got a hundred some messages yesterday. So that's why we created the group. But that's my morning ritual. I literally wrote an article about that. So it's crazy that you say Beautiful. That. But brother, listen, you know, all of you analytical ones listening that, that, that turn me off when I get too foofy. Here's a guy with 57 million in portfolio in year, just a few years yes. talking about the same stuff. So, so guys, this stuff freaking works. Please trust me on this. It's, 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 it, it's God, the universe, whatever you want to believe it can be Maybe prayer. It can be, it can be just manifesting and meditating, whatever you want to label, you want to put on it. It doesn't matter, but it works. And, mm -hmm. and uh, awesome, buddy. Awesome. So, 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 and this is how you manifest what you want in your life. Absolutely. You know, I, I show these pictures of things that I wanted in my life in the back of my planner and I got all of them, all the, all the material crazy stuff. Story? Yeah. We went to group chat and Martin, we've talked about this since the beginning. I said, we're going to own high rises together. I'm going to sit by the waterfront in New York city and you're going to be in, you're going to be in Madrid. Now he just bought the house in Madrid and now he ended up in Barcelona and in the group chat, we took a picture randomly of our breakfast table. I'm going to say, I'm going to show it to you privately. And I, I said to him, I on love the side, it. dude, look at where we're at right now. He took yes. a picture of him. It, his because you declared it because you declared it, you know, and that's the power of that is so freaking powerful. I'm trying to think of the singer 10 years ago posted on Instagram that she was going to sing in the Super Bowl and she sang in this last Super Bowl. Yeah. Not gonna, and her name's escaping me, but, and but faith is important also. What's that? Faith, gratitude, but also faith. Of course, faith. You, have you have to have faith. faith. Yeah, you yeah. have to have faith. You have to believe it. You have to, you have, and that's why you do gratitude as if you already have it. Sometimes I'll do gratitude and I'll get emotional on things that I don't even have yet. You right. know, because they are consistent <laughs> in the orbit. They're just coming slowly. Yeah. And there it is. Like you said, it just works. Even the view I have now, I had a picture of it in my first property. Which okay. Was one of the units All right. I got to show you something. Other, you know, people have listened to me, have heard, heard this before. But in the back of my book here, I've got pictures that have been in here for literally 20 years. They're, first are my gratitude pictures. I told you, it all starts with gratitude. They're my yeah. kids when they were young. Okay. But then, then the stuff that I wanted, uh, you know, uh, let's see here. Stupid crap like watches. I got a few hundred thousand dollars worth of watches, you know. Yeah, stupid. yeah. But, but, but then, you know, the material things, the Lamborghini, the Rolls, the Bentley, all this stuff that I got. But let me show you something. Just because you talked about a picture, this, you know, I knew I wanted to live on the beach. That looks just like the house I built on the beach, which I lost. But look here. This is, I live in a compound now, and you can see it. Those of you on iTunes can't see it, but, but you see the walls in these pictures. There's walls in both these pictures, these concrete yeah. walls. I live in a compound now. Look behind me. Yeah, it's, it's the same the freaking family. picture. It's the same freaking picture. And I've and I, this been in there for 20 years. But so there's another example of what you're, you know, exact same thing you had happen. Yeah. And, and the thing is this, it doesn't even surprise me. I'm not even amazed because I'm right. just as I'm not amazed to take, I'm grateful for taking breath every day, but it's a natural extension of my life. So it's just, it. totally, I can totally see it. Even the view I'm looking at is the exact same picture I put in that place. And I said, this is what I want to have. And it doesn't even surprise me anymore. So this is the right. same thing what we declared with, I mean, uh, the so, so, thing I do is really that manifesting because the information I need will come. I don't stress yes. over my new share. You don't worry thing. about the how. You right. just focus on the what. That's exactly, exactly right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The what you want. And then, again, the gratitude for me comes from my why. Because, again, mm -hmm. I have a large – so, you know, this, again, so my father, just like you, my, my father's white and my mother's black, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the things, which I'm sure you know, there's a big wealth gap between uh, minority communities in America. Oh, of course. And, right of course. America. and the course. number one thing is absence of financial, financial literacy, mm -hmm. absence of home ownership, real estate ownership. And most importantly, yeah. there's a cultural uh, premium on consumption. So what I'm doing is, and this is why I feel like there's a shift happening. So my goal is, if you want to spell it out, for the next, by 2030, 2030, I want to have 100,000 new um, people from the millennial generation. Everybody's welcome, of course have them become first time investors and millionaires by the end of the decade. That Love is, it. that is my aim. And that's Love really it. what I'm doing with the real estate is that I've built this portfolio, which is all self-funded. Uh, no, we have no debt here from the U S we have the line of credit from back home, but other than sure. that is all equity, uh, creative joint venture acquisitions. And that now I'm granting access into that portfolio, not raising money because we need it per se, because we're very well capitalized. And let's face it, Martin, he's going to be making up upwards of 20 million a year. 
So right. it's not about that. It's, it's more so granting that access, have, leaving, leaving something behind, having an impact. Because again, at the end of the day, if I one day have to bring children into the world, I understand coming from Denmark, if there's abundance, there's less crime, desperation, all the bad things that come with that. Mm-hmm. And that's really what my big why is. No, is- I love it. I love it. I love it. And I will tell you something. Yes. You know, whenever I hear this, mm-hmm. success is inevitable. And I hear it from students that, 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 that come into my ecosystem and come into my yes. world. And I ask them, you know, what makes you think you'll be a fit to come work with us? And yes. I listen for commitment. Number one, of course, uh-huh. they have to be uh-huh. committed. They can't, yes. can't be a dabbler. But no, then if they, if they tell me, that they want to serve the world, that they want to help, they want to do more than, it, that their focus is outward, that they want to help other people in, or, or the environment or animals or elderly or children or anything other than themselves, I know they're going to be successful because power moves to those that serve, period. I, it just does. Period. I, you know, whatever you believe, it's just a, it's just a, a it's just a fact. So anyway, we have gone, we've gone completely off the ranch, but, but I've really enjoyed this, my friend. And, and now let's talk about real estate. So tell, talk about some of the, talk about some of the stuff that you've got going on right now. Maybe some of the stuff you've done, you've done, so you're doing some student housing. I think you're in other asset classes as well, right? What, uh, what well, was multifamily and mixed use. I started out okay. buying smaller multifamily, divested that, got totally into development pooled money with myself and my dad and my nephew, went out, bought some, bought some uh, smaller property, some land, went out there and got, uh, so one in particular that really marked the shift for us was a three-story mixed-use property. It had two two-bedroom apartments in them and a, and, a, and, a, and a commercial component on the ground floor. Uh-huh. Now, the two two-bedrooms, they had separate, ent- separate entrances. So what we wanted to do was to just chop them up into four uh, one-bedroom apartments, turning it into a five-unit. So we went through that process with one architect and it was going kind of slow. Then I got connected with one particular lawyer who's behind 90% of the skyscrapers in, the, in, in Jersey City. And Jersey mm-hmm. City is one of the, uh, it's part of the New York City skyline. I really think it's only in Jersey City, but it's, 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 it's part of the New York City. If, if, you, if you look for certain places, Jersey City is where the Statue of Liberty is, just for God. Right. So he came there inside weeks. He had gotten us a meeting because in that same building, uh, one of my mentors owned the building. They were tenants in the building. So was the Jersey City Planning Board. They were very close. Inside weeks, we had doubled the building rights. And the assets, the asset value just shot up. And from there, okay. we went and just, I did a lot of the grunt work from the pre-development stage to get to acquire the building rights. And from there, our asset value grew. Then we got into the whole, I was very patient and diligent to make sure everything was in order. There's always this thing with, you know, we, we talk about the what and we don't worry too much about the how. So a lot of times there are things happening that you're not necessarily ready for. So it's very important for me to be patient because you don't you know what you don't know. Uh, anywho, then we started building and the one in Philadelphia is the first one we started. Right now, we were supposed to demolish that one and start building that one in Jersey City. Everything is down now. So that's pushed back a few months. Sure, sure. The one in Philadelphia, phase one is halfway done. Uh, again, I'll send you a picture. It's, it's, Exactly. Well, what is it? What is it? What is it specifically? Just a, just a hint. Uh, student housing. The complex is in two phases. Phase two, which phase one is 17 units. Uh, phase phase uh, two is actually the number of beds. We're still working that out because we have mm. to go through pre-construction. But okay. it's, it's earmarked around 85 to 90 beds for that part two. It's nice. four corners. One is owned by Temple University. It has the football field. Another gotcha. by the city of Philadelphia. The remaining two are owned by us. So that's, okay, the, so that's the one that we're doing. Awesome. AI power awesome. building. Uh, the cool thing we're doing is we're incorporating Scandinavian design into the interior. Oh, very that cool. That happens to be one of the uh, best minds. And he started the first kitchen and bath retail before they would sell to developers at building sites from trucks. They started that. It became a 13-country franchise. He still has a marvelous mind for, for that type of stuff, getting beautiful design finishes for very little money. That's why I brought him in. So, oh, I love it. I lo- you know, Scandinavian design, if you guys have never seen it, Google yeah. it and see how clean and clean. crisp and beautiful it is. It's, 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 I wouldn't call it minimalistic, but it's a lot of woods and it's just gorgeous. gorgeous yeah, elegant, design. classic lines, very right. elegant. Right. And it's something, right. Again, for, for sports, basketball, football, America's ahead of the entire world. For what you say everyone has a superpower, Scandinavian superpower is... Oh, no question. Agreed it, completely. It's better for the world. I feel like it gives us tremendous competitive advantage because one thing, we, we've, we've alluded to this uh, briefly, but one thing that I really am big on is feel. How does it feel when you step into something? If there's a disconnect between the one who creates and the, the, creates the properties and, and the end user... That's right. Really oh, stuff. And, you're, and you're incorporating uh, tech as well, I, I think I alluded to. Yeah. is run from the smartphone. 
no. so one thing example give me a personal example we got this high rise project in jersey city the reason why some of the institutional people didn't want that one was because they have an underwriting checklist in, firm, in terms of their uh, um of the acquisition number one the numbers have to work but also there's certain things if it's more than point um half a mile from the subway it, it, it'll lose some of their the flair they may not be as interested mm. this one is 0.8 miles there was mm. another big high-rise project right next to it what they did was they had shuttles now shuttles is essentially just like a bus because it has a schedule on top of that you have transportation you have insurance oh it's expensive labor so what i did was i reached out to lyft and i cut a deal with lyft say hey if i pay you a subscription this and that uh, can we get each of my tenants free rides every day so they can take the Uber, no, excuse me, the oh. Lyft to the Oh, train. I love it. So they instead, so what became a weakness, I turned it into uh, an asset, uh, like, a, like a benefit. It's a benefit it's now. A you have your own personal driver living in our place. Wow. Love so, it. And, and, and we can roll that into the rent. It only cost me 100, what was it, 120 a month per tenant. And wow. then I ran the numbers against having a shuttle, which we would have to wait for. And it just became a no-brainer. But something simple as that, understanding the end user, seeing that everybody lives off their smartphone. Smart sure, phone, sure. This made it a, a compelling business case from that standpoint. And I think that gives us an advantage also as being a younger uh, investor, developer, landlord. Is sure. that we can understand well, you've got that I, eye. You've yeah, got and, that and, eye. I build it for myself, essentially. What right, would I want? Right. Right, right, right. Love it. So, so is that your focus then? Uh, primarily uh, millennial housing, student housing? Is that, is that your focus right now? Yes. In terms of the end user, if you want to create a psychographic and demographic profile for up here in New York City, it is the one who's the second job, uh, has a second job out of college. And the alternative is living in a nice, if you live in, in that Instagrammable quote unquote lifestyle, you have to have two, two or three roommates. Mm -hmm. Or you'll have to live in a in a classy type of building, right? Uh, it may not be the best, but this one here, it targets them where they can have that Instagrammable lifestyle for the same that they will pay for. Let's say, for instance, some people they will pay twelve, fourteen hundred for a room. Our units in that particular property, well, not the high rise, but there's one with ten units, the one that I mentioned where we get double the building rights. Mm -hmm. That particular one is it has a rooftop that has an unobstructed view of the skyline. That's wow. number one. So basically, I, instead of creating a uh, uh, a large, small building, I took it as a boutique high rise. So nice. it's a totally different paradigm in terms of the approach and philosophy with which you do the finishes and everything. There's an elevator, there's an unobstructed, uh, like I said, rooftop, and there's everything you need to take selfies that you can post on Instagram and feel <laughs> like you're a big shot. That's, and, and, and it's that feel, it's that feel. So wow. that's, that's one example, and we price it comparable to uh, nice apartments and two family homes. So it's an easy decision to make slightly below the high rises and, and, and the new product that's coming out, not even necessarily high rises, just mid rises, high rises, and then we price it according to that. So that's one thing targeting those, that age group. And then of course, students, grad school students uh, in and around Philadelphia. Love it. So yeah. let me ask you a question. Okay. Yes. Uh, you know, you, 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 you um, I love where, you know, the, the creativity that comes into what you're doing, which is frankly unusual. It's usually very linear, very yeah. empirical, very, in this business, it's very empirical. It's numbers, it's linear. It's, it's, you don't see a lot of creativity like you're expressing nope. here. Nope. Um, so, so let, let me ask you this. Um, you know, I've got a lot of aspiring investors that, that um, I'm hoping are motivated by your story. I'm sure that they are. And so, what would you tell them about this business? What coaching might you give them? What, what advice might you give someone that is, is maybe just getting started, maybe he's got, you know, one, uh, one small property, uh, yes. maybe just has done some single family. What would you tell them? I would tell them that people, we're naturally wired. I don't know where it comes from, the competitive systems, the hierarchy systems that is just embedded into our entire beings, whether it's in school or when we come up that people always tend to overvaluate, well, overestimate other people and underestimate themselves. So whenever they think of where they are, they think of it as a weakness. Oh, I don't, I don't have any money, therefore I cannot. Instead of going, I have nothing to lose, let me give it a shot. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 a simple, it's a simple shift right there. So what I say, if you have one property, okay, great. Get another small property, then get a third. From there, you have a proof of concept. Now you're a single family now you're a single family mini mogul. You can go out there. Now you can raise small some amounts of money and go buy a couple of more. From there, you can show most people are patient. I'll say be patient. Buy a couple of more. Show proof of concept, steady returns because raising money for real estate deals isn't necessarily because just, okay, I have a good deal, a good, a good idea and a good deal. It's also showing one, 
I am prudent and diligent with other people's money. Two, I can manage budgets. Three, I can complete the cycle. Four, I can exit successfully, do all the accounting and legal and all the things that come with it that people don't think about. But I would just say, play to your strengths. Okay, one thing, the biggest thing that people can't buy, the only thing people can buy is time. So um, one of the things that I get tremendous amounts of help because people will see me, because in, in the real estate game, I'm a fairly young guy. They'll see me and they'll go, wow, this kid is... Uh, Whatever the hell they see, I don't even know. But there's right. something that they see that go, okay, let me give him a hand. Let, let, let me help him. And there's somebody that will, it will just come to you ways that you can actually successfully complete. But you just, number one, have to believe that it's attainable for you. But in terms of practicality, because I know you don't want to get too hocus pocus, it would just say play to your strengths and be patient. Just get started. Once you start with one, do another. Here's a perfect strategy I give to people. I mentioned this on my page. A quick way, I was going to say how I said, a quick way to earn 8 to 10% um, returns with very little money. What I recommend to people is they can go, um, there are people that go to auctions in Philadelphia specifically. They then put them for sale on Craigslist or Zillow and Redfin. You can buy those at $5,000 pieces of land. Mark that up 50%, 7500 Sell it with no, uh, no down payment, only $500 down payment, and charge 10% interest, which is very little for a $7,500 property. And if they don't pay, you just take it back, rinse and repeat. But what you're doing is you're showing, again, your dollar returns are minimal, but your percentage returns are, you mark it up 25% plus, you put 8 to 10% interest. That's a good case study. Do that two, three times. Now you can actually create, a, again, the dollar amount isn't large, but you're showing that you are, you're a capable and responsible entrepreneur who can manage real estate assets. And now people can invest in a concept that's scalable versus an idea that's a maybe, maybe not. I hope that wasn't too long-winded, but that's no, no, no. That that's a great case study, and 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 I will tell you that uh, you know in our in our um, materials we provide people with yes. like a sample deal package. So 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 if they don't have proof of concept, they can say, hey, this is what we're looking for. If we find wow. something like this, are you interested? And that works very very well to wow. raise equity for deals. So wow. okay, how does that work yeah. exactly? So with yeah, so, so basically, you know, it's one of our deals or a deal that, that we like in, and we, we, we create it, we put it into a PowerPoint. Yes. And, and I taught this at my two-day boot camp last week and, and when we went through an example of one. And it's just, and, and then, it's, then it's a package that you can present to a potential investor and you can say, right. hey, this is what we like. This is what we do. You know, if we find something like this, should we, should we talk? Should we, you know, is this the kind of returns you're looking for? Is this yeah. the kind of asset you're looking for? Is this, you know, in the timeline and, and all of that. And it's, that works very, very effectively for my students. Um, so, um, so that's another way. I love your idea of proven concept too. And, and, and certainly any time you can do that, then, then, then you've proven yourself. But if you don't want to take that time to do that, Here's an alternative. That's an alternative that, that I present. That's a really an amazing alternative because, again, I like to think, okay, work with what you do have. Because mm -hmm. whenever people look at two external factors, they, some people say, okay, I will go do that to get there. But most of the time, nine out of ten times, people look to that, I don't have that, therefore, I cannot. Yeah. And, and just removing all the excuses and obstacles. Uh, well, I, I, I love what you just said about, about the fact that it's human nature to overestimate other people and our, our own capabilities. And when you can either act as if or, 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 or build that competence to the level where you're confident, yes, the world is your oyster. There's nothing Absolutely. you can't do. It's confidence is the biggest piece of this. Yes. And that typically comes from expanding your knowledge base and, and just taking action and making the mistakes and moving forward regardless exactly. of those mistakes. That's exactly but, uh, it, is that you're not afraid. People, most people think of mistakes as, okay, that is uh, in soccer world, a red card, you're out of here. That's not the case mm -hmm. at all. It is just a, a learning lesson that brings you close to your goal. I like to say, if you're doing cold calls, you have to do 10, you have to get rejected 10 times before you develop the numbness to no longer take it personally. And that's mm -hmm. when sales begin. And it's the same thing. You have to, quote, not, fail necessarily, but have setbacks sure. that prepare you. Go through the emotional feeling of like, oh my God, doesn't that deal with that? And then, and then go on. It's just so important. And most people don't, most people just don't do that. No, they're, they're, they're afraid of the rejection or, yes. they fear, or they fear failure, not realizing that we fail our way to success. You know, I tell the story uh, of a meeting uh, 
you know, guys, I'm sorry, because I know you've heard this a lot of times. I just want to share this with Philip. And, 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 and that is, I tell the story of meeting Sarah Blakely, the billionaire owner of Spanx, you know, the women's undergarments. And, yeah. and uh, she started with $5,000 and now she got a jet and she's on the cover of Forbes <laughs> and something else. Cool, cool lady. Cool, cool lady. But, oh, but, really? but she, her dad used to tell her ever, or, or ask her and her siblings every night at the dinner table, what have you failed at today? Wow. Is that an awesome question to ask wow. your kids? Yeah. Wow. So, so you don't fear failure. That's when you got to instill it in the children. Yeah. 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 That's I. I love that. So. So. And. And. You know. And. 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 Listen. I've had twenty four businesses that I've built, and I call them seminars. I, I call them seminars. By the way, I don't call them failures. And several have been worth lots of money, tens of millions of dollars, but most have been spectacular, flaming seminars. Okay. And. Yeah, and yeah. failures. And so. Uh, and that's that's what we do. We. You know. And and I and and those of you listening, guys, don't for, don't fear failure. Fear being in the same freaking place a year from now that you are right now unless you love where you are right now so right all right um so so let me ask you this yes were there any early failures in your life that contributed that turned into um things that pivoted into success later any any setbacks that that and we all have setbacks but but and you've got a great mindset around them but anything that you can think of that was a real doozy that might have contributed to future success. Absolutely, I mean it's a it's a tough question on one end simply because I just don't view life that way. Right, I just view life that way. If there's something that's a set, if I get a rejection, I just. I just don't view it as a setback. I just always that, learn. Okay. Guys, guys, that's a clue, okay? What he just said is huge. I, I just got to hammer that home because yeah. your model of the world, you don't, you don't stay in the setback. You move past it and stay focused on what you want, and that's so critical. Uh, so anyway, I'm sorry. I, I, I hate no, it when no, I do that. Is, but I really have to stop and think. One of the things that I learned, which is more on a human level, is just lessons that I learned around, uh, along the way is through realizations. One was uh, around 2011, I jumped. One of my favorite places to hang out was Barnes & Noble. I would just go mm -hmm. look through books and just like feel mm -hmm. which one do I like and just look through it. Mm -hmm. One I looked through was it said there was this challenge in there of don't complain for two weeks and complaining of like, oh man, this sucks or this and that. Because what that breeds is if you stop complaining, you start assuming uh, accountability. Once you start assuming accountability, what that does is it makes you realize, that, like you said, the world is your oyster. Everything is attainable to you. However, it totally removes the crutch and the comfort of excuses. So you really have to be ready for it. There's no longer that out where you can point to everybody else for your circumstances. That's the flip side, but everything else belongs to, to you. So that's the upside. So once I started realizing that, I go, okay. It got to the point where people could really do nothing to me to upset me, and I had to sort of pull back from that because even if I knew, oh, I should be upset here, I would have to fake it. So that was like, it's, everything is about wow. balance. So and that was one thing. Another thing coming from Denmark, it's a very utopian society because one, there's not really poverty. Two, because there's no poverty, everybody has access to give. And that, so that's just naturally embedded into my personality because I feel as though this was, if you just tweak certain things, everything is attainable to you. So that's why I try to empower the people. My audience specifically, I like to, I call it demystifying money. I break down a million into what it is because it seems so elusive and far-fetched that something people cannot, cannot reach. And I remember thinking that way. So that's what I try to do when people go, wow, mind blowing this and that. But anyways, in terms of, so that coming here, realizing that this is a totally different society. There are actually people who don't, that don't mean well. There are people that want to, that speak to you kindly, not because they care for you, but because there's an ulterior motive. So I started to realize the true nature of the world. Not that, oh, this is bad. It's just that we come from this very select utopian society. So I had to learn that. I had to have some personal setbacks, some, uh, in terms of, I don't want to call it heartbreak. I'm like, wow, this person was where, where you felt betrayed and things happened financially yeah. and things of that nature, right? Because right? you financially, just personally. Uh, oh yeah. And okay. Then, and then and then I realized, okay, this is not personal. One developer told me this billionaire developer. He said, if people try to feel they're trying to cheat you, cheat you in the bill, just don't take it personally. Just understand they're in the business of generating revenue for their enterprise. So if they can increase the revenue of their enterprise, it is not because they want to cheat you. They have to drop. So, uh, so that, that did something for me right okay, there. Okay, this okay, okay. Expanding consciousness. So it's a series of lessons. They're all, they're all in the same uh, category, which I'm very grateful for. I have one, one example where uh, phew, people try to rip me off or try to cheat me on deals. Fortunately, I have the capacity, I feel at least, to spot if someone has bad intentions, so I just move on. Yeah. 
And, well, and you're, 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 you're probably got an incredibly honed sense of intuition. I it just, just, I can see that just by looking at you and talking to you right now. And, and guys, you know, when you're, when you're getting into partnerships and I talk about this uh, ah, yes. quite extensively, you've got to trust that because your brain is so powerful. It will, it will see little micro, micro <laughs> things that you don't see consciously. And right. if you've got something in your gut and you feel it, trust it because it's real. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And that's the number one thing I say, like, that's another Einstein quote. Um, well, well, yeah, I'll paraphrase a bit. It said, uh, keep things uh, simple. Something like that. Life, I forget what it was exactly. But basically, life is, in essence, very, it's not as difficult as we make it seem. Like you said, our intuition, we'll drown it by overthinking things. Mm -hmm. Analysis, paralysis, trying to look for, there's a lot of times where we are now is a byproduct of choices we've made in the past, right? And, and, and thinking systems and everything. And if we're looking at things from the standpoint of, oh, this experience was this, this person was mean to me, we can block off blessings by realizing there's something that's good here, but because we've become jaded, we can kill that blessing. So that's why I, can, I, I don't, t if I take the, I'd much rather live and always assume positive intent and take a few hits along the way versus living and always looking for the negative. Because guys, 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 I hope, I hope you're hearing this because so many of us, we go through life driving using the rearview mirror and living past setbacks, past failures, instead of focusing on what we want, like what Philip's right. doing here, which is an absolute key to success, guys. Right. So, so right now, more than ever, with all the crap happening with COVID, it's, it, it's managing that focus and that positive expectation that's so critical. Well, listen, my friend, this has been a real treat for me. Um, and, and, and uh, you know, we've talked about things that, that, that my listeners have heard from me ad nauseum about, you know, about <laughs> mindset. And, and so we're, 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 kindred, we're kindred spirits in that regard. And, and it, yes. it is the secret. It's 80 to 90% psychology. It's only 10 to 20% the vehicle, the real estate, the business, the entrepreneurship, whatever it is. But it's been a real treat, my friend. And I'm definitely going to connect with you the next time I'm in New York. Absolutely, and, uh, it would be a pleasure. Yeah. Dinner, yeah. lunch on me, coffee on me, whatever you want. Uh, I, I, will, I will look forward to that, my friend, and, and I really appreciate you taking time to be on the show, brother. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, it's, it's, it's an honor and pleasure. And I look, uh, yeah. Take, take care, bud. Thank you. Thank you. Rod, I know a lot of our listeners are wanting to take their multifamily investing business to the next level. Now, I know you've been hard at work helping our warrior students do just that using our ACT methodology which is awareness, close, and transform. Can you explain to the listeners how they can get our help? You bet. Guys, we've been going nonstop for three years, building an amazing community of like-minded people. And our coaching students, which we call our warriors, have had extraordinary results. They've purchased thousands and thousands of units. And last year, we did over 1,000 units with our students. And we're looking to grow this group and take it to the next level. We're looking for people who want to follow a proven framework that's really step-by-step step, and then leverage our systems and network to raise equity, to find and close deals, and to build partnerships nationwide. Now, our warrior community is finding success in any market cycle. So, if you're interested in finding out more about how you can become more of our incredible network and take advantage of the incredible opportunities that are coming very soon, apply to work with us at mentorwithrod.com or text CRUSH to 41411. That's mentorwithrod.com or text CRUSH to 41411.